What is up YouTube, IDM here, and welcome back to another video. So I'm gonna show you guys how to get PSP on your iPhone. Uh, this is pretty awesome. I did do this guide back on iOS 14, but it's been a while and I figured I'll do an updated version. It's pretty much the same, um, but like I said, I just wanna do a refresher. Also, I'm gonna mention that if you have a jailbroken iPhone, uh, there is an easier method than what I'm gonna show you. Just check out the video link in the description. Uh, it's it's easier on a jailbroken iPhone, uh, but on a non-jailbroken iPhone, it's still it's really not that bad. I also want to mention that any of the controllers that you might see in this video, check out the links in the description. I have done videos on them if you guys want details about what the controllers are. And also, I'm going to mention that I do have a second channel where I play these retro games. It's focused on basically just doing gameplay of retro games, specifically on the iPhone and iPad. So if you guys want to check out gameplay of old PSP games or Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64, Game Boy Advance, anything like that, if you guys want to check out gameplays, just check out my second channel. I do upload there pretty regularly and uh, it's pretty fun. But anyways, let's kick this off. So I'm going to mention this might be a bit of a longer video. There's a lot to cover. So there will be timestamps down in the description. So if you need to jump to any point of this video, just check out the description. Literally the description has everything you need. So if you have a question, just check the description first. You'll probably find it there. Also, there are some things that I can't show on YouTube because of the way it is. Uh, if you guys have any questions about anything in specific, you can always follow me on Twitter and ask me there. I can answer lots of different questions on Twitter if needed. But to kick this off, we will need to sideload the application. And the best method I have found to do this is just simply with the alt store. Okay, now to get Alt Store on your device, it's incredibly easy. All you got to do is come to the Alt Store's official website. I'll leave the link for this down in the description. But once you come to this website, you can just download Alt Store for Mac or for Windows. Also, if in this tutorial I don't cover something you're looking for, like if you're on Windows, if you go to the FAQ page here, it literally gives you step by step how to get Alt Store up and running on Mac and also on Windows. So if something doesn't make sense in this tutorial, literally just keep this page open and just do each step by step on the website and you will get Alt Store up and running. So I just wanted to add that real quick. Uh, but anyways, we're on the Mac, so we just download the Mac version here. Downloads as a zip file. You can go ahead and open up your downloads and just click on the zip file and then you can just drag and drop the Alt server into your applications. Now I already have it in there, so I'm not gonna do it again. But once you have it in your applications, you can just double click it and open it and you'll notice that it shows up in your status bar. That means the alt server is running. Now at this point, it might have you update the mail plugin. And to make sure that the mail plugin is running, all you gotta do is make sure that your mail app is open and in the background. And then you can go to the preferences for mail and go to manage plugins and just verify that the alt plugin dot mail bundle is checked on if it's not just click the check mark and then apply and restart mail that does have to be enabled for the alt server and alt store to work and then like i said just make sure that your mail application is open and in the background so don't close it out just minimize it and make sure it's open that is required anytime you want to re-sign an application your computer must be on and the mail app open in the background. Now, the next thing I like to do is enable my iPhone or my iPad to use the alt server wirelessly over my Wi-Fi. This is incredibly nice. So to do this the first time, just plug your device in and then within a finder window, just make sure that show this iPhone or iPad when on Wi-Fi is checked on. This allows you to connect to that device wirelessly and this also allows alt server and the alt store to work wirelessly as well as long as your computer is on and the mail app is open you can install apps with alt store and you can re-sign your apps with alt store also i want to mention the more you use the alt store the more it's just going to automatically refresh those applications any chance it has so as long as you keep your computer on regularly and have that mail app open it will just re-sign your applications um, on its own, and it's really quite convenient. Another thing I wanted to add is that with the Alt Store, if you have multiple devices, you can only use one Apple ID per device. So what I did is I created a, a second 
Apple ID, and it's literally just for the alt store. It's incredibly easy to do. Just make an Apple ID, and then you must enroll it in the beta software program. Uh, I've never mentioned that, but you have to sign up that Apple ID for this public beta software program. It's completely free. It allows you to use beta versions of iOS or iPadOS or whatever it is. And uh, that's what's going to allow you to use the alt store. So on my iPad, I have a burner Apple ID, one I just made up, that has my seven day signing period, just like everybody else. And then on my iPhone, I'm using my paid developer account, which does cost $100 per year, but that allows me to sign applications for one full year on my iPhone. And that's how I have alt store on two separate devices as I have two separate Apple IDs. And I just wanted to talk about that very quickly. Now that you have alt server up and running, all you gotta do is click on install alt store and then choose your device. Like I said, it'll show up here if either A, you have it plugged in or B, you have it show on Wi-Fi. So just choose one of those two and then it's super easy. All you gotta do is sign in with your Apple ID and password. This is 100% safe. It's literally used just to sign the applications so that you can use them. Like I said, if needed, just make a burner Apple ID and you should be good to go. So all you gotta do is enter in your credentials here and then click on install, and then the alt store will install onto your device. Another thing I wanted to add here real quick about alt store is after you click on install, if you don't see it on the home screen of your device, just do a reboot or power it off and power it back on. That just is a bug in iOS where if you install a third party application, Sometimes it doesn't show up on the home screen, so if you don't see it after installing it, just reboot your device and then you will see it on the home screen. Okay, now that you have the alt store on your iPhone, you are able to sideload applications onto it. So we're gonna do that now. What we're gonna do is go into Safari and literally all you gotta do is search PPSSPP and the first website that will show up there is where you need to go, so we'll just click on that. And as you can see, this is the website where you can download the application now there is a free version there's a there's a gold version I just used the free version I think it works perfectly fine so I'm just gonna select that and then you just scroll down until you see PPSSPP for iOS now there's two versions there's an IPA which is the one we need and then there's a deb file so if you're jailbroken you can go ahead and install the deb file it's much easier uh, but like I said we're gonna just do the non jailbreak method with the IPA so I'm just gonna select on it and as you can see, there are two files here. We're gonna to wanna to download the .ipa. The top one is the .deb file, that's for jailbroken iPhones. And then the bottom .ipa is for non-jailbroken iPhones. So just go ahead and select on that. You can see you'll get a download pop-up. So just click on download. And then we can go into our downloads and you will see, there it is, PPSSPP. So we're just gonna locate the file. So there's the .ipa. And then from here, all you gotta do is long touch on the file and click on share. And then we're gonna to wanna to share this with the alt store. So it should show up in your share sheet. If for whatever reason you don't see it right here, just go ahead and select on more and then just scroll down and you will see the option for the alt store. Now at this point, just select the alt store. And then what it's gonna do is jump into the alt store on your device and begin side loading it onto your iPhone. You will notice a loading bar and just give it a few seconds and then it will show up in your active applications. Now at this point, you might not notice the, the application on your iPhone. This is just a normal iOS bug and pretty much what you need to do to make the app show up on your home screen is refresh your iPhone by doing volume up, volume down, and then hold your side button. Basically just churn your iPhone off and then churn it back on and you will see the PPSSPP application on the home screen. Now at this point, what you can do is you can launch the application and I'm actually gonna back up here. Uh, I would launch it first, so that way it generates the, the folder system in your files app, but you'll notice that you won't have any games like I do. Your, your game library is gonna be empty. Now because of the way YouTube is, I can't show you where and how to download any kind of games, but I can show you how to install them. So what I've done is I have downloaded Tekken 6, as you guys can see there, and these games download as a .7z, 
which is a zip file that can't be recognized in PPSSPP. So we need to extract the game from this file. So to do this, I like to use iZip from the App Store. So I'm just gonna long touch on the game, click on Share, and then again from your share sheet, you should see iZip as long as you have downloaded it from the App Store. I like to use iZip Pro, which is the paid version, but there is a free version, which is just simply iZip. So I'm just gonna choose that application, and then you'll notice that it's gonna ask, would you like to unzip all files? So I'm just gonna click on OK, and give this, uh, this, give this app a minute because it's a pretty large file to unzip. And that's another thing I wanna mention is just take caution on how many games you install because these are pretty large games and they can take up a lot of memory on your iPhone or your iPad. So just watch out for that. But we're just gonna wait here uh, for the file to extract and then we're gonna go ahead and move that file to where it needs to be in order to be played within PPSSPP. So as you can see, it's extracted and it is a .iso file. This is very similar to PlayStation 1 games. So what we're gonna do is select on the .iso and then I'm gonna click on share at the bottom and we're gonna go ahead and save this to our files. And I'll show you the directory in which you need to place this file for it to work. So you can just minimize everything. You go to on my iPhone and then you choose the PPSSPP folder and then you choose the PSP folder. So make sure that that folder is selected. That is the proper place in which games need to be located for the PPSSPP emulator to recognize them. So then we're just gonna go ahead and click on save in the upper right. And then we can go into our files app and we can verify that that game is in the library. So I'm just gonna back all the way out to on my iPhone, PPSSPP, PSP. You can see here is my entire game library and there is Tekken 6 in which I just installed. And you can notice that there's other folders in here. Don't worry about those. Just make sure you're putting your games into the PSP subfolder within PPSSPP. And now once you've done that, you can launch the PSP application and you will notice that the game will be in there. Now I need to actually go back a folder and go back into it and it should We'll just kill it from uh, multitasking. Sometimes the games won't load or show until you refresh the app by killing it. So we'll just do that and then we'll go into games and then as you can see there is Tekken 6 at the bottom in which I just installed. Now another thing I want to show you quickly while we're in the PSP uh, emulator is uh, you can use a controller. There is on-screen controls. There, there's a ton of settings you can adjust with this as well and one tip that I'll give you guys is bumping up your rendering resolution. You can make it look really, really good, especially if you're on a newer iPhone that can handle, you know, the graphics. So I actually like to run uh, my PSP games at 8x resolution. I think it looks really good. And uh, depending on how high you want to bump that up kind of depends on which device you have. If you have an older iPhone or iPad, you might not want to bump up the resolution so high. But if you have a newer iPhone, it should handle 8x up to 10x, no problem. And that's pretty much all you got to do to get PSP onto your iPhone. Now at this point, what I could do is just simply plug in my controller. There, there is on-screen controls for anybody that doesn't have a controller but I like to use a controller because I just think it really makes the gameplay more immersive and it makes my iPhone feel like it's actually a PSP, which is pretty damn cool. And uh, like I said, if you guys are curious about any of these controllers, uh, link in the description if you wanna check out how they work and all that. But as you can see here is uh, Tekken 6 running on my iPhone. We got 8x resolution going on here. I'm just gonna exit and we'll just choose someone. I'm sure, we'll um, go ahead and just create them and we'll just do an arcade battle. I'm just gonna show you guys that it does work. We'll just choose him. And there you go. As you can see with 8x resolution, it looks absolutely amazing on the iPhone. And then just having this controller just really, really makes it 
feel like a PSP and it's just uh, I have so much fun playing these games that's why I have such a, a large library of games and uh, I play them all the time like I said if you guys want to check out gameplays of any g retro games just check out my second channel that game or that channel is dedicated uh, to retro gaming and we got our first KO so there you go guys that's how you can get PSP on the iPhone on iOS 15 this does work on the iPad as well so if you have an iPad you can follow this same guide and it should operate just the same hopefully you guys enjoyed this video if you did definitely throw me a thumbs up that helps me out a lot here at the channel and if you guys want to see more videos like this in the future don't forget to click that subscribe button this has been IDM and I'll catch you guys in the next one later